Chris Jericho, his gimmick is he's a troll. He goes, guys, man, I wish I could be on every Dynamite for two hours straight every week. You know I would if I could. They complain that he's, you know, he just can't go anymore. Can't go in the ring. Did you know, he says, Shibata, just want to thank you for your match. We had the highest rating on cage match last week. Dead. I was passed away. I, I That line slayed me. Brian. Along with Granny and Craig and sometimes other people. Wrestling. Half Mexican, I didn't celebrate any Cinco de Mayo today. Mostly Norwegian celebrated Cinco de Mayo all day today. This crowd was uh, quite insane. My and goodness. Into everything, chanting, singing, jumping up and down. Absolute, complete maniacs. I think this was maybe the greatest crowd ever in WWE history. Pin is broken up by the debuting Tonga Loa. In fact, the noise levels were so loud for this show that Tangaloa couldn't hear his cue, and he almost missed the spot as a result. And this really, really felt like they're just killing time until Tiffany's inevitable title win. I thought this was a really, really good match. I thought the fans made this even better than it was. Yeah. They absolutely loved Bailey. They're breaking up at any time. Priest is trying to take control with Rhea gone. Everybody else is sick of them. Not to mention Dom and Liv got something going on on the side. Yes. Congratulations and thank you to both teams wearing matching gear. I always appreciate that. I also appreciated Kyrie and Asuka vibing to Bianca's music at ringside. That was tremendous. <laughs> so much fun. Brian, you mentioned earlier the crowd did not get tired at the end of this. I would argue they peaked in the main event. And there was more singing and chanting and bouncing and the camera was shaking. It was very good and the crowd made it that much better. Um, they didn't have to do much to get this crowd. They didn't. Nobody had to do anything to get this crowd all night. Guys are being allowed to go out there, and the women, and uh, and do matches like they would do anywhere. And this was this was one of them. I mean, they would have probably done this exact same match in New Japan. Probably would have done this exact same match in AEW. Would have done this exact same match in the old Ring of Honor. I mean. Brain buster on the fucking apron, burning hammer, kickouts at one. I thought this match was great. A fantastic main event. A stipulation ideas for the Bothell Beautification Contest, I will call it, to be held in Las Vegas, Nevada. Strip Twister. No. How would that even work? <laughs> and who wins? Nobody. The fans. <laughs> push up contest. We do push up contests, but you can go on your knees. I don't know how that's going to. Oh. For the push ups. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes. Also, he wants us to do commentary on a show. Craig, please. The guys both put on baseball hats, and attached to the baseball hat was a candle that they lit. And they gave both men squirt guns, and they went out 10 paces. I like that idea. And turned around, and the first one to knock out the light was the winner. You want to light my head on fire. Candles on the brim of the hat, you moron. You're not going to light yes. the hat on fire. Stranger right. things have happened. Why not? Name one. Why do you why not? <laughs> This goes back to 1913. Gustav and Joseph. I gave that a four. I Oldest available professional wrestling match footage. I kind of wait till. Oh my God, look at that guy. He looks like Vinny. <laughs> Am I wrong? It's the posture. It is. Yes. Yes. They gave Lou the win in his last match. And everyone's trying to kill him with alcohol. They're like spraying shit right in his eyes. He's like going like this. He can't even see, but they keep spraying stuff in his eyes. They gave him a little celebration. Kind of felt like a big thing. Orange Cassidy versus Trent Beretta. If Trent Beretta hated his friends so much that he wanted to violently attack them and apparently end their career, why is he still wearing their dorky t-shirts and using the dorky music? This is a shitty heel turn. Trent is wearing the best friend's gear, but he's, he's scratched off everyone else's name. Oh, what a badass. Yeah. I'm scared now. Yeah. And he's still a dork wearing a dork t-shirt, celebrating his circle of dork friends, which is like ironically cool when they were baby faces. Now he's a dorky bad guy, and dorky bad guys suck. Mm. And Vinny's saying that in a orange, pink, button-up shirt. Oh, this is a much better shirt. Shirt. This is a much better shirt than anything Trent's wearing on TV. Is, today. What are you wearing? It's just a button-up shirt that's a loud color. I know. Were you like doing something today? Were you going to dress up? You, you work was... at home. I'm a professional trying to put on a professional appearance. Well, I'm a professional, too. You look homeless. I I'm look like I'm a wearing week. a bib. I heard that today. Those people can fuck off. Serena Deeb, who I tried to tell you all is supposed to be a babyface, and the fans don't care about Serena Deeb 
playing babyface against Tony Storm. The exact same thing that happened with Deanna Parazzo. The exact same thing that happens every time. I tell you it's going to happen. They do it anyway. I don't know why. Three belts represent the ROH Trios titles. Three belts represent the AEW Trios titles. And three other belts represent the Unified Trios titles. Nine belts for what is essentially at this point one championship. This seems stupid. I still have people telling me they don't have too many belts. <laughs> this faction has too many belts. No promotion should have as many belts as this faction does by themselves. Swerve cuts his promo, threatens to beat Christian's ass like Kendrick Lamar and Drake, calling Christian another fake father from Toronto. I'm very not cool, as you may know, but I did laugh at that line. God, this poor fucking guy. He got beat down, and then he finally gets some backup, and then his backup turns on him and beats him down. The Samoa Joe video. Awesome. Fucking awesome. He's training. He's meditating. He is a warrior. This was when the whole show just it really did. turned around. Absolutely. This Samoa Joe video to the end of the show was one fucking great pro wrestling television show. Chris Jericho is the learning tree. His gimmick is uh, he's a troll. And he has taken everything that people say about him online. And he is turning it into this character. So what do people say about him online? Well... God damn, does he have to be on every fucking show? Well, what does Chris Jericho say here? He goes, guys, man, I wish I could be on every Dynamite for two hours straight every week. You know I would if I could. They complain that he's, you know, he just can't go anymore. Can't go in the ring. Did you know, he says, Shibata, just want to thank you for your match. We had the highest rating on cage match last week. Dead. I was passed away. I, I That line slayed me. Brody King at one point. He looks like Wolfpack Sting. His face is totally red. It was so red, I thought they overdid it with the fake blood. That just looks silly. And then he gets in the ring and it starts to drip. I said, oh, no, that's real blood. Holy Christ. This was the best Mercedes promo she has cut since she showed up. Oh, for sure. By, by actually miles. The Elite come out for a promo. They're a chance for CM Punk. Anarchy in the arena, you want it, you got it. Good luck finding two other people with big enough balls to face the Elite. Nick is the greatest. Eddie yeah. Kingston and Brian Danielson is part of that uh, match coming up at Double or Nothing, which will be the main event. So uh, Swerve and Christian will not be closing the show. This hype video for Wesley was tremendous. It was. He did have a very serious back injury. Anytime you have that, there's a chance it actually is over for you. And, you know, numbness all down the legs and everything like that. I mean, that's bad news, dude. And he was expected out eight months to a year. He was back in six months. So, uh... Great for him. It is time for the NXT Women's Combine. Nine grueling events testing speed, power, strength, which is different from power somehow, and conditioning. And they show Thea Hale pushing the sled, and she's doing it all in Thea Hale mode. Her eyes are bugging out. She's roaring at the top of her lungs, full extension with her arms. Ah! We are to believe that they took care of this referee and i was having a discussion with somebody there i was very upset about this segment and they go he wasn't murdered and they actually sent me a screenshot of the referee bound and gagged and shoved in the back of a car oh, God. oh this is better the people that bound and gagged this fucking referee and took him perhaps to his death they're the baby faces right and so when they put stacks in the ring He's a babyface heel ref. Right. God damn it, this made me mad. Fuck, I don't even know how I have the energy in me right now. I've been holding this in for two days. I thought it was over it. But the more I think about it, fuck off. God. How are they the fucking babyfaces? They fucking kill people. They murder people. They fucking kidnapped and bound and gagged an innocent fucking man. And Ava's down with this because she's a babyface. Fuck off! God! Ah! And Trick says, Lash, do you want to tell them? Or do you want me to tell them? And she goes, babe! Oh! There you go. <laughs> and the fans go nuts. And they gasp. And Trick says, why don't you tell the people why you call me Trick Willy Wonka? And the fans go fucking nuts. Shawn Michaels has formally invited Kendrick Lamar and Drake to NXT to settle their beef. I hope they go. You can hope all you want. <laughs>
Yeah, hey, highs and lows as always on uh, NXT there. But, man, they had the lowest of lows. 